All right, so we're going to go ahead and record it. So hi guys, this is Andrea Rosser and our coaches are actually coaching. So they're both busy this morning. So I'm filling in and just a little bit of background. I've had the pleasure of working with Coach Palmer for about eight and a half years now and um, love Myra to pieces, but that's a newer relationship. But I've enjoyed these daily Zooms just as much as everybody else. I feel like I get value from it every single day. Um, I make notes. It's so funny because I'll, you know, I'll talk to them and I'll make all these notes and then we'll get off and I'm like, oh my gosh, I got even more notes. So hopefully you guys get some value today. And I'm trying not to be offended by the word because I think they usually pick the words and share them with each other, but I was assigned and the word that I was assigned was patience. And I don't know if that's because that's something they think I need or if that's something they think I have, but um, probably in the need category. But I'm going to read you guys, and I have a ton of notes, um, but I'm going to read you guys um, some notes that I have. But the definition of patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. And it goes on to say it's the ability to endure Difficult circumstances such as perseverance in the face of delay, tolerance of provocation without responding in annoyance or anger, forbearance when under strain, especially when faced with long-term difficulties, and it's the level of endurance one can um, accept before they turn to negativity. And all that's well and good, but I found a picture that I thought summed it up a lot better, okay? It says, patience with others is love. And I was thinking about, you know, when all of this pandemic stuff happened, I was having to teach my, um, you know, my dad how to use like a face call, like a video call, a duo on his phone. And he was terrified. He's like, well, how do I know they're not going to see me all the time? And how do I know when they're going to see me? And he had just had never um, used any kind of technology like this before. And it could have been really annoying. I think if I was talking to a, a peer or, you know, uh, maybe an acquaintance, it would have been really annoying, the struggles that my poor father was having with this FaceTime. But it wasn't. It wasn't with him. And I think obviously there's a lot of love there. It's my dad. Um, but I had a lot of patience for him because I knew it was something new. I knew it was something different. But I care about him. And I wasn't going to make him feel bad when he was already struggling trying to learn a new technology. So patience with others is love. Patience with yourself is hope. And I thought that was really powerful. Um, I don't know about you guys. Um, but I have to have patience with myself quite a bit. And it might be a small thing, might be a big thing where I just screw up, right? You know, maybe I'm trying to lose a couple pounds, but I end up having an ice cream cone before bed, right? But I have patience with myself. I give myself a little bit of grace because I am hopeful that I'll make better choices tomorrow, right? And then this one, it says, patience with God is faith. And Obviously, I don't know everybody's beliefs on here, any of that, but I think right now with our world, I think that's such a powerful one, at least for me. Um, it's trying times. I mean, we're seeing all kinds of just insanity, for lack of, lack of a better word. There's heartbreak. Um, there's, there's so much out there that we wouldn't, we wouldn't wish on anyone. And... Um, I'm, I'm a believer. And so I'm having a lot of faith and I'm doing a lot of praying right there. So, um, just wanted to give you that perspective, but it goes on to say, you know, patience doesn't mean being passive or just resigning to something negative. It's an emotionally freeing act of waiting, watching, and knowing when to act. And I thought, you know, to me, sometimes feeling patient you feel like you're powerless or if you're waiting for something you can feel like you're powerless but patience is saying you're taking that power you have that power because you're choosing to wait for whatever it may be and there's some advantages right there's some advantages i think other than well it's going to talk about that your your blood pressure but p patient people enjoy better mental health um they're better friends and neighbors right if you can be 
you know, patient with the people around you, they're probably going to want to spend a little bit more time with you than if you're, you know, quick to judge and quick to just say, ah, oh, right, throw your hands up. I throw my hands up. Um, more empathetic and more forgiving, which who doesn't want to be more forgiving? I know that I do. Um, and then patience helps us achieve our goals. And if anybody has ever, I look at Ant, he's, he's an athlete, he's a runner. I know that there were times in his life that he was going to, ha he had to be patient in order to keep practicing, to keep doing all of that to achieve his goals. And I think with our business, you know, many of us are all in kind of the same field or similar fields and success is an, it is an instant. Right? We have to work for it. We have to be patient for it. We have to keep striving. And if we're impatient, we're going to give up and we're going to give, we're not going to get our goals. So it's definitely a big key to success. And it's linked to good health that regulating that, you know, blood pressure and all of that. Patience helps all of there. So we got four ways to cultivate patience. And I'm gonna take more notes on this when we get off because I wrote, I literally, if you guys saw all the pages, I actually had to type it up because I'm like, oh, these are lessons I really need to learn. Um, but first of all, stop doing things that aren't important. And you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I can run myself in circles, but so much of it wasn't important. And I'm walking away from the things that are important and I'm being impatient with them because I'm putting an item on my to-do list that has less value, but I'm saying, I have to get this done. I have to get this done. And I just think about my son, um, you know, he'll want something from me and I'm like, oh, not this minute, sweetie, because mom's got to. And a lot of times I'll look back and what did mom have to do? Right? It really wasn't as much value. There wasn't as much value to it as spending that time with Chasey. And so what it was saying was, go look at your day, right? Go write out your day. What do you have to get done today? What's everything that you have to accomplish? And go cross off a couple items. And for somebody like me, if you guys are like me, it's real hard to take things off your to-do list. I like filling that to-do list. I'm a, I'm a to-do list person and I like it. I like being busy. But to slow down and really be patient with your life and the people in it, go look at it and cross off two or three things. And then this one, the second one, I do this all the time, actually drives the people in my car crazy, but it says reframe the situation. So this is where I use it. I live in Southern California and normally we have a ton of traffic. I spend a lot of time in a car sitting still or you know, stop and go. And there is nothing more annoying, I don't think. But I love to reframe the situation. And so I talk about, tries my kids bonkers, but I talk about the drivers in the other car. So somebody cuts me off and I'm like, oh my goodness, they really had to go to the bathroom. Like, oh no, they had to hurry. They had to get out of here. So we better let them go, right? Um, or gosh, they're, his wife, you don't know, but his wife is in the hospital about to go into, or in labor. So we got to let him fly right by us. And I just make up these ridiculous stories about the people around me because it entertains me and my blood pressure is not getting raised. I'm not saying, oh, what a jerk. They're cutting me off because they don't respect other people. I mean, we can spiral. You know, somebody's late for a meeting and it can be, oh, they don't have any respect for anybody else. How could they be so selfish? Gosh, and I'm just getting impatient and I'm feeling horrible. Or I can say, oh, they have a lot on their list today. I know they'd be here if they could, but something must have come up. So I'm going to take this time to enjoy whatever and be patient because it makes me feel better, right? And then practice mindfulness. So there was a study saying that if you can practice mindfulness, um, you know, take a deep breath. Um, notice your feelings, right? Like I know, like it's bedtime. I know these beautiful children are driving me bonkers. I just want some quiet time. But if I can just take a moment and say, okay, I'm irritated, right? I'm feeling angry or overwhelmed or whatever it may be, but that's my feeling. I'm going to notice it and I'm going to let it go that I can become more patient in that moment and be present with my kids or whatever it is that I'm trying to accomplish. And then practice gratitude. And I love this. If we feel grateful for what we have, we don't have to be desperate or impatient for our circumstances to change. 
And I know that can be difficult. Um, I feel like this pandemic has taught us patience, right? Um, I think I saw Valerie say out here, she's been praying for patience and I didn't see the whole comment, but weren't you taught, Valerie, you don't pray for patience when you're sitting in traffic. Um, but, um, you know, definitely I feel like we've all been taught how to wait, right? How to slow down, how to wait. And that is a gift, I believe, that we were given right now. But, um, you know, I'm going to say thank you to both the coaches for trusting me on here. And hopefully you guys got a little bit of value from this today. Um, but I'm going to go read this a little bit more and practice patience because I'm thinking that maybe they gave this to me because I need to be a more patient person, <laughs> but we'll see. But uh, I love you guys. This has been fun for me to be on here with you. And hopefully you guys got some value. And I know Coach Myra and Coach Palmer will be back here bright and early with you guys tomorrow. So thanks for bearing with me, being patient, and you all have a great day. Bye. Thanks, Andrea. You did a great job. Bye.